We discuss automation in starships on today's Legends Lore video. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Before we begin, just a very quick announcement. Yesterday I posted the first episode in what may be a weekly or perhaps bi-weekly Sunday gaming series. I played Empire at War for about an hour, so if you guys are interested in that and you'd like to see more, make sure to check it out. I'll put a link down in the description. Your guys' response will dictate whether the series continues, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, etc. But today we're looking at why Star Wars ships don't seem to use artificial intelligence. Because one thing that clearly sets Star Wars apart from other science fiction universes is the fact that almost every aspect of a starship is controlled by an organic operator. Even weapon systems, which require fast reflexes and a high degree of precision, are manned. And this is generally true from the largest turbo lasers on capital ships to the laser cannons on starfighters or freighters. Of course, the gunners are helped and augmented by computers, but ultimately, they are still the ones firing. And I want to use weapon systems as a way to talk about starship automation as a whole. Because unquestionably, a sophisticated targeting computer from a comparable sci-fi universe would do a better job than a human or alien manning a turret. Give Cortana control over a Star Destroyer's weapons, and she's not missing much. So why are real gunners still used, at least most of the time, and why has automation generally not become more prevalent? I think there are really two options. First, is it possible that the technology for this sort of mechanized automation is not available? Maybe. Star Wars has treated advanced machines with some inconsistency. Focusing again on weapons, we get the following passage from Children of the Jedi. It wasn't a base on that asteroid, Master Luke, explained 3PO. That asteroid was the ship, firing at us with an automated gunnery computer. Are you sure? Luke could have sworn it had been a living hand on the guns. No computer had that kind of timing. This suggests to me that besides for those augmented by the advanced AI within the eye of Palpatine, ship-controlled guns generally do not match the reflexes and skill of a real pilot. We see something similar in Book 2 of the Darth Bane trilogy where computer-controlled guns are revealed to generally fall into predictable firing patterns, which can be easily avoided. On the other hand, the Revenge of the Sith novelization claims that droid tri-fighters can process information at light speed and react effectively. I don't see why a scaled-up droid tri-fighter brain couldn't control the guns on a capital ship. As a whole, droid starfighters were said to have exceptional reflexes but poor creativity, which made them adequate pilots but not better than the best organics. However, unlike piloting, manning a gun does not require creativity but does require a high degree of reflexes. So if anything, you'd think a droid would be extremely well suited for this kind of role. However, even if each gun only had the brain of, say, a super battle droid and thus comparable skills to an organic, their ability to communicate near instantaneously would alone offer an advantage. Most, if not all, ships also already have integrated ship brains, including the central computer and the navigational computer. So I don't necessarily think that the tech being unavailable is the answer. This brings us to the second point. If the technology is there and does seem to offer an advantage, it's probably not widespread because there's one or more things preventing it from becoming common. The first is probably reliability. Star Wars seems to tie up computing power and artificial intelligence, rather than just advanced computers. Now, the distinction may not be obvious, but the difference is that instead of having, say, a shipboard computer performing automated repairs on a starfighter, you have a droid doing the repairs. Droids, particularly those with high intelligence, are nearly, if not totally sentient and often develop personalities, especially over time. In other words, for gunners, you can use highly advanced artificial intelligence or rudimentary gunners which are the ones that pale next to organics. And I think this is supported by Luke's quote in Children of the Jedi, which refers to a gunnery computer, in the fact that on Trade Federation ships, we do actually see droids manning the guns. Besides for being expensive, this also adds a vulnerability 
to your ship. Having a computer capable of basically disabling your ship's most important systems is problematic, especially if that droid develops a personality. This is especially true where slicers, code decryptors, and jamming are all very prevalent in the Star Wars universe. So having a fully automated ship or even just fully automated weapons systems means that you run the risk of being disabled should you face electronic warfare. And there are other risks to having your ship tied to an integrated computer system or AI, as we saw with the Katana fleet. Though the Dark Fleet's disappearance was ultimately due to the actions of a living being, it was facilitated by a connected and integrated computer system and over automation. And the Katana fleet leads us to some of the more practical reasons why organic gunners are still used. The creation of an automated fleet which required less gunners was alone seen as controversial and the fleet's loss was a boondoggle for the Republic and that alone probably steered starship manufacturers away from trying to reintroduce common automated systems. What's more, there is a heavy heavy droid bias in the galaxy. We see this directly not only in the actions of the Empire but also galaxy-wide in the rejection of, for example, BRT supercomputers. I think it's likely that droid repression along with the associated Associated economic, political, and social pressures, especially when combined with the Katana fleet disaster, limited not only the integration of shipboard computer systems, but also droid development generally. So that, combined with the vulnerability of over-integrating your ship, I mean, ask any colonial vessel other than the Battlestar Galactica how that went, is probably why we haven't seen AI used more heavily in Star Wars capital ships or starfighters. Anyway, thank you so much guys for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're interested, that you check out Sunday's gaming video. I'm really not sure how that series is going to pan out, so if you're interested, now's the time to show me. Anyway, until next time guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.